proudly we hail. From New York City, where the American stage begins, here's another program of the cast of Outstanding Players. Public service time has been made available by this station for your army to bring you this story as proudly we hail the Women's Army Corps. Our story is entitled, The Triple Play. This is the story of a girl who followed a trail of suspense and adventure in a roundabout way, as proudly we hail the Women's Army Corps. Our first act curtain will rise in just one moment. But first, young lady, if you're a college graduate, I've got some real interesting news for you. Right now, you can apply for a direct commission in the Women's Army Corps. As an officer in the Army, you will have a career of public service and responsibility with the opportunity to develop your capacities as you advance in rank and pay. Serve yourself. Serve your country by serving in the Women's Army Corps. For further information, go to your local United States Army recruiting station. And now, your Army presents the proudly we hail production, The Triple Play. <laughs> You can usually know a person by the things they like or dislike. But if you want to get a story out of them, ask them why they like or dislike a certain thing. Now, take me, for instance. If you were to ask me why I like baseball, and the Brooklyn Dodgers in particular, you'd be surprised at the answer. Well, the game isn't going to start yet for a while. I might have time to tell you. It goes back a couple of years and about 3,000 miles from Ebbets Field here in Brooklyn. My name is Julie Wilson, and as you can see by my stripes, I'm a sergeant. At the time it all happened, I'd been in the Army only six months. Just got my PFC stripes along with something else. A trip to Paris, France. Well, that was one of the reasons I joined up. To see the world, as the posters say, and I was really thrilled. However, I was even more pleased when I learned that I had had some journalism in high school, so my new assignment was with Army Headquarters Troop Information and Education Office as a reporter for our unit's news publication. I threw myself into my new job enthusiastically, maybe too enthusiastically. For one day, several weeks after my arrival, when I breezed into the office of Captain Reed, T-I-N-E officer, in charge of the newspaper. Good morning, Captain Reed. Have I got something to tell you? Good morning, Wilson. That's very interesting because I have something to tell you. Yes, sir, but when you hear... I think maybe you'd better hear first what I have to say. Uh, yes, sir. Wilson... How many stories have you written for us in the four weeks you've been here? About 15, sir. And how many have we printed in our paper? None, sir. That's right. You know why? No, sir, and I've been meaning to ask and you... And I've been meaning to tell you. A good reporter has to be many things. He's got to have a nose for news, be interested in human beings, write vividly. But above all, he's got to be interested in truth, the facts. And that's where you don't measure up. Captain Reed, I've never falsified anything in my whole life. Of course you haven't. But each one of these stories of yours couldn't be printed because none of them was based on facts. They were based on rumors, hearsay, imagination. I was hoping you'd shape up with time. I'm sorry, Wilson, but I may have to make a change. A change? You mean me? Yes. You'll still be here in the office, of course, but in another section. I see. Well, I guess I might as well tear this up. Tear what up? outline I had for a story. Story? What about? A haunted castle in a small town near Paris. I thought if our soldiers knew more about the historical background of this part of France that... Oh, well. Private Wilson, got a good point there. Haunted castle, huh? Let me see it. Huh. Sounds good. Except for one thing. It's not based on personal experience. Uh, but, sir, the man who told it to me lives in the town. That may be so, but don't you see, Wilson, that's exactly what I mean. It's hearsay. He could have embroidered the story a little in the telling. That's what I wanted to ask you. What? If I could have a three-day pass and go up and investigate it. Well, why didn't you say so before? Get up there right away, and if you come back with a good, solid story based on fact, I might change my mind about your transfer. You mean I... You, you mean... Now don't stand there stuttering, Wilson. Get down to the station. And don't forget... 
I want you to verify the story, even if you have to bring back the ghost to do it, dead or alive. During the train ride, I went over my outline and notes, trying to set up a plan of action to follow once I arrived in Lantan. However, as things turned out, any plan I might have figured out wouldn't have mattered anyhow. When the train pulled into the tiny station platform, I got off and looked around for a taxi. Waited for a few minutes, then I decided to hoof it. Then this ancient cab drove up. Ah, uh, good evening. Uh, your bag, mademoiselle? Ah, uh, thanks. Uh, will you please take me to the nearest... Hotel de Fleur. I recommend that hotel highly. It is not only the finest one in our village, but it is also the only one. <laughs> Get in, mademoiselle. Thank you. Uh, it is a long time since we had American soldiers in our town. They were very fine boys, but they were none so beautiful as you. Uh, <laughs> Uh, allow me to introduce myself. I'm Henri Marchand. Oh, well, very nice to meet you, Monsieur Marchand. I'm Julie Wilson. Ah, you carry a fine name, Mademoiselle Wilson. We in France remember that name, Wilson. <laughs> you have come on vacation? Uh, not exactly. I'm here on business, you might say. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Business and women are like beer and champagne. They do not mix well together. Uh, what uh, kind of business? Well, I've heard that there's a haunted castle here in Lantan. You know, with a ghost in it. Ghost? Oh, we have castles here, but there are no ghosts in our castles. Only people, and they are very much alive. Yes, I know, but there's a legend that... Uh, oh, never mind. I'll just have to look around for it. Maybe you'll drive me later? I do not know about that either, mademoiselle. That is one reason I was not there to meet the train. There is perhaps something very big going to happen, and if it does, I shall not be able to drive you. Ah, here we are. I will take you in to introduce you to Jacques. Well, thank you, Monsieur Marchand. But why can't you take me... Right this way, please. Ah, Jacques, Jacques, mon vieux. Well, do not stand gaping like the Lombardy sheep that were surely your ancestors. This is Mademoiselle Julie Wilson, who will be your guest. How do you do? Uh, ah, yeah. Welcome to our little joint here. It is nothing to uh, flip your lid about, but for a one or stand, I guess it is okay. Only stick around for a moment. Two gentlemen guests are wanting a taxi. They will be down in a few minutes. Okay. I will wait outside for them. Jacques, you will take good care of the young lady soldier, huh? Nothing but the best. She will get our presidential suite. Oh, please, nothing special. Oh, no, he means you will get a room with a bathroom on the same floor. <laughs> Bonjour. <laughs> hey, that Henri, the car, the real gone car. Uh, excuse me, are you American? Am I a... What makes you think I'm American? Well, you talk just like one, except for a little bit of accent. Lady, those are the kindest words I have heard in a long time. During the war, when I was a kid, we had a lot of Brooklyn soldiers staying at this hotel. I guess I kind of ended up with a Brooklyn accent. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's kind of cute. Merci. I, I thank you. Now, 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 just sign here. All just right. sign here. You, uh... Want to know something? Mm, sure, why? The Dodgers beat the Giants yesterday 3-2. to two. I thought you might be interested. Well, thanks, but to tell you the truth, I'm not too keen on baseball. Well, I wasn't either before these guys came here, but let me tell you, I am not so bad baseball now. I tell you... He continued I... to talk, but something happened that made me stop listening to him. Down the lobby stairs came three men side by side. The two men on the outside were wearing trench coats. But it was the one in the middle that caught my eye. He was short with a rumpled top coat and a hat pulled down over his eyes. I caught only a glimpse of his face, but that was enough. Excuse me, Private, but these gentlemen are checking out. Good evening, sirs. Your cab is outside. Good. How much is our bill? Well, you have been here only since this morning, so it will be for half a day. Now, let is, me see. Is uh, a thousand francs enough? No, we, we, we. Sign here, please. Uh, excuse me, sir. What is it? Oh, uh, no, not you. The one in the middle. Yes. Yes, it is. Monsieur Avon, how are you? What are you doing? Go away. Oh, Monsieur Avon, don't you remember me? I interviewed you during the embassy reception last Please. week. Don't you... do not bother him. He's not feeling well. This is not Monsieur Avon. You are mistaken. Come, let us go. I am not mistaken. It is he. I swear it. Jacques, let me see the register. Oh, certainly, mademoiselle, yeah. Oh, dear, his name is not it. 
Was I seeing things? Guess I've mistaken identity, maybe. Maybe, but I talked with Edvon for an hour at the reception. I distinctly remember that wax mustache of his. In France, many men wear wax mustaches. It is not uncommon. Mm, that's true. Well, you're right. Maybe I was mistaken. Uh, I will show you to your room now if you will follow me, mademoiselle. Oh, Jacques, where is your phone? On oh, the wall over there. Operator, will you get me U.S. Army headquarters in Paris? P.I.O. office. Jacques, these men have been here since this morning? That is right. Did the little man say anything to you at all? No, the big man did all the talking. Uh, that wasn't much. They went right upstairs and they stayed there all day. Oh, I see. Uh, hello, P.I.O. office. Uh, P.F.C. Wilson. Is Captain Reed there? Oh, he left already? Look, would you tell him to look up what he can about the present status of Monsieur Claude Evon, a French attaché at the American Embassy, and then call me right back? It's very important. Okay, thanks, Sergeant. I'm staying at the Hotel de Fleur et Lantin. That's right. Goodbye. Okay, Jacques. Sorry to keep you waiting. I think nothing of it. This way. Well, mademoiselle, how was your job? Oh, Jacques. I don't know what it was you gave me, but in any language, it was great. Oh, sir. Oh, yeah, I know what you want. I know what you want. The score, Dodgers 2, Paris 1, bottom of the first. Uh, uh, good. Uh, you know, Mademoiselle Wilson, since the Americans were in our village, almost the whole people have become Dodger fans. <laughs> I know it. Jacques told me. Oh, we, a telegram came for you a moment ago. It is on the desk. Ah, oui. I was expecting it. Merci. Uh, uh, Monsieur Marchand, those two gentlemen you drove just now... Where did you take them? To the airfield. Some airfield. It was once a cow pasture. It was. It still is. They took a plane? Ah, oui. Uh, there was a small private one waiting for them. Uh, do you know where they were going in it? Uh, I tried to hear, but they talk in a strange language. But I did see the plane fly in the direction of the east. Oh, excuse me. The east? I was right. He's being kidnapped. We've got to stop them before they get to the eastern zone of Germany. Uh, Private Wilson, the call is for you. It's a Captain Reed. Oh, oh, uh, good. Thanks, Jacques. Hello? Uh, uh, Captain Reed? Captain Reed? Jacques, there seems to be something wrong here. Can you find out what it is? Well, try. Hello? Hello? Hello, hello, hello. I must go now. Uh, merci, Jacques. Oh, wait just a minute, Henri. You might have to take me to the telegraph office. Oh, I'm sorry, mademoiselle, but I will not be able to do so. I am sorry, too. The telephone is a dead duck along with everything else. What do you mean? He's right. This telegram I've received from my union headquarters in Paris calls for a general strike in France as of this moment. If you wish transportation, I suggest you go to the local union headquarters. Tough, mademoiselle, but this has been coming for a while. Who knows? It might be over tomorrow. Tomorrow? Tomorrow will be too late. Much too late. You are listening to the proudly we hail production, The Triple Play. And we will return in just one moment for the second act. I suppose all of us at one time or another have seen the principle of strength through unity demonstrated by a handful of sticks. Singly, they can be broken very easily. But when bound together, it's practically impossible to break them. And so it is with our America. Working together as a team, we can be certain that our democratic way of life will never be broken. One of the most important members of democracy's team is our United States Army a highly spirited organization that offers unequal opportunities to modern young men and women. Today, the Army has a new career program in operation, one that permits you to choose your own course of training in the skill that best suits your aptitudes and interests. So, uh, well, we suggest you find out about it real soon by visiting your nearest United States Army recruiting station. Remember, team up with the Army, and you team up with success. You are listening to Proudly We Hail, and now we present the second act of The Triple Play.
I suppose I couldn't have been blamed if I'd forgotten about the whole thing now that there was a strike of all communication and transportation and I had no way to verify my suspicions about the little man and his companions. But I couldn't forget. It took me only two minutes to make up my mind. Chuck. Oui, mademoiselle. Uh, let's try that phone once more, huh? What? Okay. Hello. 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 Nothing. Okay, never mind. Jacques, how long would it take a small plane to reach East Germany from here? I guess about two hours. Uh-huh. Let's see. The plane's been gone a half hour. That gives us about an hour and a half anyhow. Now, Paris is about a fast hour's drive from here by car. So if I can get there to notify the army, they'll still be tied to intercept the plane. Yes, but how will you do that? That's where you come in. You know where I can hire a private car? Private car? Why, the village barber, he has got one. Good. Where does he live? Uh, but unfortunately, he has put the car up on blocks until the price of benzene come down. And who knows when that will be? Well, who else has got one? Well, uh, the mayor, but he lives 20 kilometers from the town in the opposite direction from Paris. And by the time you could walk there, it would be too late. These are the only two cars there are. Only two cars in this whole town? Mademoiselle, let us face it. You are in the sticks out no. here. The only other kind of transportation are horses and wagons and bicycles, and they would be much too slow. But I think you are making a mistake. Those three men look to me like they are businessmen of some kind. And why didn't they let me talk to him then? No, sir, they have got to be stopped. Jacques, do you think that uh, Henri might be uh, persuaded? Not if I know Henri is very... Wait stubborn. just a minute, just a minute. He told me before he left to go to the local union headquarters if I wanted transportation. Yes, it's he worth did. a chance. Now, where is it? Not far from here on the corner of Saint Marie and Villon Street. Come, I will lend you my bike, but prepare yourself for a surprise. <laughs> It is oh. I, Mademoiselle Wilson. Uh, would you care for a little cognac? Huh? Oh, well, thanks very much, Henri, but I've got to see the president of your union local right away. Mademoiselle, I have the honor to inform you that I am the union local president. And not only am I the union local president, but I am also its vice president, secretary, treasurer, and membership. I am, you might say, the whole union. <laughs> uh, what can I do for you as such? Well, Henri, I've got to have transportation to Paris. Hmm. Oh, you, Mademoiselle, and uh, for what reason? Well, you know, Henri, the three men you took to the airfield. I take it you want me to waive the rules of the general strike and provide you my taxi to take you to Paris? Yes, I do, but we got to hurry. Mademoiselle P.F.C. Wilson, after due consideration of your request, I'm sorry to inform you that the executive decision of the local is in the negative. Your request is based upon suspicion. Now, if you could prove this man was Monsieur Havon, maybe, or if you could present a more urgent reason, but as it is now, I'm sorry. All right, all right, Henri, I understand. If you take my advice, you are too young and pretty to be concerning yourself with such matters. Ah, look outside, mademoiselle. There is a silver moon. The air is soft and smells of flowers. Spring in France is for the young. Henri. Oui, mademoiselle? I have another reason to go to Paris. I didn't mention it because it's a little personal, but after listening to you, I'm sure you'll understand. Oh, please, I will keep it confidential. Oh, thank you. You might call it a affair of the heart. There's a sergeant in Paris who I just found out is being transferred back to the States. He leaves within the hour. Ah, oh, mademoiselle, you are in love. Come, my cab is at your disposal. It is a good thing for you that I am a sentimental old fool. Oh, thank you, Henri. I will fly like the wind swooping down a Normandy plain. Get in. <laughs> she is reluctant. Alors, come, come, my faithful. This is a bona fide trip. What's the matter, Henri? If it is what I think it is, that... It is. For heaven's sakes, what is what? 
This pitchfork, my wheel ran over it, and my tire is now flat. Oh, don't you have a spare? Mademoiselle, I'm lucky I have four tires without having extra ones. Oh, it'll have to be repaired, then. Yes, but only the garage mechanic has the equipment to do well, that. Well, let's go to him, then. We still have time. I would be only too happy, but he's on strike also. Well, maybe if we talk to him. And, unfortunately, he's an unsentimental man, having been married for 30 years and the father of nine children. I see. Well, I suppose that's that. Thanks anyway, Henri. Very nice of you. I'm sorry, mademoiselle. Maybe I can still do something. Oh, never mind. We, we don't have that much time anymore. Good night, Henri. Hello, Mademoiselle Wilson. Hello. You look beat. Sit down and take the load off your feet. Thanks. Uh, how how do you make out at Union headquarters? Oh, not so hot. Henri consented to take me to Paris, and just as we pulled out of the garage, he got a flat tire. Uh, there was no one to fix it, eh? Hmm. Well, it's all water over the dam now. How are things with you? Oh, quiet. Nothing new. Oh! Brooklyn just won another one. Oh, what was the score? Ten to seven. Ten to seven. Yeah, right? Carl Erskine did a great job of pitching today. He did. Today. Today? You mean that's the score of today's game? Why sure. Look, Jacques, stop me if I'm wrong. How can you know the score of today's game when all communication facilities are out of service now? And according to the time differential between here and the States, the ball game must have just finished a few minutes ago. Well, very simple. I am a am. Oh, come on, Jacques. Don't joke with me. I'm on the level private. I am a radio am. Well, what's that? A radio am is a guy who operates a shortwave radio station for kicks. You surely have heard of them. You mean you've got a sending radio back yes, there? Yes, certainly. I got a pal in Brooklyn who tells me the score. Oh, boy, come on, Jacques. We've got things to do. You got him yet? Oh, there's a lot of stuff in the air tonight. Well, keep trying. There's still time. What are you going to do after we get... Do you know what a double play is? Yeah, oh, the Jack the Ripper calling Joe the Bomb. Over. Well, I'm going to try a triple play. Joe the Bomb to Jack the Ripper. I'm getting you. There he is. Hold on, Joe. Now, what do you want me to tell him? I'll tell him. Joe, PFC Wilson of the U.S. Army. Now, listen. It was a long shot, but I was hoping it would work. I had Joe call the long-distance operator to see if transatlantic calls were still getting through to France. After he did and found they were, I told him to put through a long-distance call to Captain Reed in Paris and then have all three parties, Joe, Jacques, and the captain, keep the channels open so that I could conduct a conversation directly with Captain Reed. That way, I could eliminate waste of time. And luck was with me. Joe got the long-distance operator, she got the captain, and in a total of five minutes, I heard his voice come out of a loudspeaker. Captain Wilson? Captain Wilson, can you hear me? Uh, yes, sir, I can hear you. Uh, captain Reed, I've got something to tell you. And I've got something to tell you. I'll listen to Oh, no, not again. No, Tim, I'll keep trying. Wait a minute. I waited, but I could see it was no use. The static was really loud, and Jacques couldn't get him. About 15 minutes later, the door opened. Where is Private Wilson? I am Private Wilson. I am the prefect of police for this district. What do you know about Monsieur Claude Arvon, please? Uh, well, nothing, sir, except that I think he was kidnapped by two men about an hour ago in a plane. Oh, which way did they go? To the east. Uh, merci. Hey, hey, Prefect, hey! But he was gone before I had a chance to ask him what and how he knew about me and my knowing about Claude Avon. However, I knew now that something was being done. So while Jacques kept on fiddling with his radio, I sat down for a moment's rest. It turned out to be more than that. For I awoke about an hour later when... Poirette, wake up. I have them now oh, on the radio. Oh, who? What? Uh, your oh. Captain Reed, he wants to talk to you. Oh. Oh, okay. Ah, uh, yeah. Speak right into this mic here. Hello? Hello? Hello, this is you, Wilson? Yes, sir. Uh, Captain Reed? Well, finally. You're the hardest person to contact I've ever known. 
Is this the first time I had to go halfway around the world to talk to somebody only 50 miles away? I'm sorry, Captain. Now, if you're curious, and I know you are, your friend Claude Avon and his captors were intercepted just before they crossed the border, and it was a mighty good thing. He was carrying some secret papers. Oh, that's great. How did they find out about it all, Captain? Pretty simple. After you called the first time and we were cut off, the French government informed me that Avon had disappeared under mysterious circumstances. So after you called again, naturally, I put two and two together and called the French military in Paris, who got in touch with the police in the district of Lantan by short wave to check with you. Oh, well, that certainly was quick work. Yes, thanks to you. It'll make a fine story. Now, how are you doing on the haunted castle? Um, I haven't got to it yet. Well, if you do as good a job on that as this other one, we'll talk about a transfer for you when you get back. Good night. A transfer? Good night, sir. Good news, mademoiselle. Uh, I don't know, but I'd better find that haunted castle, but quick. But how? Bonjour, bonjour, vive l'amour. Oh, hey, Marshal, what are you doing with that tire around your neck? <laughs> mademoiselle Wilson, it is the tire. I've convinced the repairman with two bottles of cognac that l'amour is more important than la grève. <laughs> Excuse me, the strike. <laughs> the tire is now fixed and we can go to Paris. Well, Henri, you're an angel, but we're not going to Paris. We're going to look for a ghost. We didn't find the ghost, but we did find the castle with a ghost story. When I got back to headquarters in Paris, Captain Reed told me I was being transferred. Not to another section but to the job of assistant managing editor. After my tour of duty in Europe, I was assigned as chief of section of the public information office here in New York. And that's why I'm here now at Ebbets Field, to do a story for my base newspaper. So perhaps you can see now why the Dodgers are my favorite team. Oh, there they come on the field now. Come on, you bugs, let's go! I've always found it to be true that a man with a good eye to the future makes a good soldier. That's why so many bright young men and women are joining the United States Army now. For Army life is an exciting career and there's plenty of room up at the top. Today, American soldiers get the finest technical training in the world. Every man is a specialist, a master at his job. And the Army sees to it that every man is trained to do his job and what's more important, to do it right. Because the Army is growing so rapidly, today's soldiers are being promoted fast. Oh, you work hard, sure, but believe me, the rewards are really well worth it. Right now, the Army needs healthy, intelligent men and women, volunteers from 18 to 34. So if you've got what it takes, then you think seriously about an Army career. Stop in at your nearest United States Army recruiting station today. Get all the facts about what the Army has to offer you. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this radio station. Proudly We Hail is produced by the Recruiting Publicity Center for the United States Army, and this is Richard Hayes speaking, and inviting you to tune in the same station next week for another interesting story on Proudly We Hail. <laughs>